there is a new kid on the block and that is the IDA robotic cameras. So in the Skaho universe with device cores for all sorts of broadcast devices, we have added support for IDA's Visca cameras. So if you don't know, the Skaho universe is controllers with an operating system. You can install device drivers or apps, or we call them device cores, which is software support for a particular device. So we have added it for Visca cameras from IDA. So isn't Visca just like a protocol that so many cameras support that you wouldn't have to particularly talk about a, a the IDA camera or a Sony Visca camera? Well, in a sense it is. If all you need is just a joystick to control the PTC uh, position of the camera, that's true. But what our controllers do is far more ambitious than that. We want to adjust all the unique features in the cameras. So we have spend a lot of time in engineering so that our third-party controller actually knows what this camera does, what it supports, and those features are implemented with the exact value ranges that camera supports in the controllers. So it's a really great user experience because there's no confusion. Um, you only get access to things that exist in the camera and there are no buttons that try to send commands that doesn't exist. Just to name a few. Now, um, the PTC Pro is one of our new uh, joystick controllers uh, right here. And um, um, that's what I want to demonstrate to you today. So um, the first thing I want to do is to let you get an overview of the topology of what I've connected here. Because the IDA camera is not an IP camera and all Skaho controllers are IP controllers. In the future, we may have serial outputs as an option, but the world is going in the IP direction. So what might be even better for you, also because it makes cabling easier, is to use what we have here, a IP to serial converter. So let's take a look at the topology we are working with. So uh, the PTC Pro controller, we'll zoom in on that in a moment. And then we have the IDA camera here. You can see that I have joystick control over the camera with my joystick and uh, it all happens by uh, the, the Skyway controller is connected with Ethernet. It's 12 volt uh, power supplied here. This is just a USB cable needed for configuration only, not for operational scenarios. So I can take it out. So power and Ethernet, the camera, video out, power in. No, wait a second. This is Visca in. This is power in, Visca in. So this is serial Visca. And this box from a US converters called Zeta Server is a serial, serial here to Ethernet converter. So the Skyway controller, the PTC Pro, communicates over IP into this box and out of that comes IS232 that goes in to the IDA camera. That's the topology, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is to zoom in on this controller and let's take a look at the features it has. Before we continue, if you wanna get in depth with uh, what we are talking about, you can watch many other videos in our channel about using robotic cameras and you will find that every one of these will also apply to working with either robotic cameras because the principles are the same. Again, it's the beauty of having a single operating system for your controllers that you can assume that reuse of functionality. So let's take a look at now the PTC Pro in a zoomed in uh, view. So we have a camera selector down here. We have another selector right here, which will recall presets or store presets. And then we have a uh, PTC joystick here. It has a pan tilt zoom. And also you can rotate the top to zoom in and out. We have a focus knob here, and then we have four encoders that will adjust settings in the camera. And those settings will be the ones you find in the display. This is a menu section. So as you press buttons in the menu section, you see how the options assigned to the encoders will change. And those other things will be taking a closer look at now. So first, if you want to check out how the uh, pencil zoom works, you can see that I have here the joystick and I'm now moving the camera quite slowly. Um, in, uh, in panning, tilting, I can zoom. This camera has a pretty quick zoom and pen operating operation as well. Um, 
Okay, so the image is a little bit dark. Let's see what we can do about that in a moment. And uh, preset recall. I have a preset here. I can recall another preset here. Did I assign a preset here? I did. Okay. So, uh, let's take preset 3. That works out for me. Good. And then the camera selector. Oh, one thing which is really cool about the camera selector is that you can select multiple cameras at a time. So if you think about what makes our Visca controller so awesome, there are two things uh, you could mention, which is very specific. And the one is we take great pride in supporting a particular camera. I already told you that we want to know intimately the value ranges of the IDA camera and put them in your hands in the controller. So that's one thing. Then you can select multiple cameras at the same time. So the cool thing is the camera selector, you can press and hold down the key for other cameras and then they'll be grouped together. And you know what? Then you can send the same iris setting to all those cameras or you can select uh, a manual mode for something in one go or you can flip the image by uh, accessing the settings in the menus and it will be sent to all selected cameras. That's a really unique feature and very powerful when you need to set up multiple cameras on your set. After that, you can always go back and just select a single camera at a time, which is, of course, what you would do if you want to operate the pen tilt of the camera. That you probably don't want to do across three cameras simultaneously, right? Okay, let's go back to the menu. So if we look here, we have in exposure menu, we have access to the exposure mode. And what you just saw me do is press the button simultaneous or, um, more times. So uh, when I press it again, I get access to secondary options, you see? And um, that's how menus sometimes work. You see it's not applying to the white balance menu. It doesn't apply to the color menu. It doesn't apply to the image menu, but it does apply to the exposure menu. And the reason why is of course the exposure menu has too many options to show in just those four tiles you see right now. So let's get to it. So I adjust to manual mode and then you see I can adjust the iris of the camera. You can watch on screen how I'm, how this adjustment is affecting the image of course. I can adjust the shutter speed in either direction. Again, notice the values. They seem to be very specific and they truly are. It is taken from IDA's uh, approved list of iris values and shutter speeds. So you get exactly those values that are supported in the camera. No more, no less. And the same with the gain. The gain setting is also specific to all Visca cameras I've been working with so far. And um, that's uh, one of the things we do to work with these value ranges. Iris, shutter speed, priority, some mode called bright, uh, which is not available right now. Uh, if I press here and I'm in auto mode, I can select exposure compensation. In this case, I can adjust uh, if the exposure should be a little bit above or below the average that would be selected by automatic exposure. So let's put it a little bit above maybe. I can adjust backlight on, off. And those principles are reused over the controllers again, or sorry, over the different menu items again and again, that you have these knobs that will allow you to do these things. Uh, actually, if you have an on off option, you can also assign it to a button. Um, wait, if this video shouldn't be too long, I should probably refrain from demonstrating it, but maybe I'll do it at the end of the video so you can see how easily that's done. Let's get back to the demonstration. So for white balance mode, indoor, outdoor, one push, um, uh, auto tracking white balance here and uh, so forth. Uh, if I wait, if I go to, I think manual mode, then you see um, red gain settings, uh, blue gain settings. I can adjust here for manual white balance and we can go back to auto. If I go to color, I have saturation settings and I have chroma settings. So we have here aperture gain, that would be type of sharpness. And then noise reduction, picture effects, those are pretty, well, I wouldn't say cool. I really, I mean, I've been wondering who is using this and why, but uh, they, they are definitely visible on the screen. Um, gamma mode and so forth. Now, um, and then yeah, power on, menu display, focus mode. Oh, focus mode would be manual auto, and you can also uh, push, one thing that happens behind the scene and which is a consequence of uh, our insisting on working closely with the camera and its um, featured uh, parameters 
is that we have a two-way communication going with the camera. So we are not just pushing data out to the camera, we are actually reading back from the camera what the current settings are. And I can show you how that works, because if I go into the uh, on-screen menu of the camera, I can make an adjustment and you'll see how the controller picks it up. And it also does that when it connects to the camera in the first place. So if we look at the controller right now, uh, you can see that we are having iris, shutter speed, and gain settings here. So we should see those reflected when we go to exposure mode. You see we have uh, gain 2dB and the shutter speed. Oh, all these things matches. That's perfect. So now I want to change the shutter speed to 75 and I access the menu here. You'll see how this is reflected on the controller because the camera reports back that we made this change using the remote control. And that's another thing, it goes on behind the scene, so you won't be able to like appreciate it directly, but you will recognize that this is a high quality uh, implementation for uh, these cameras. And that's generally how we do with all these things we support, that we want to pull values from the device. So even if you have multiple controllers uh, communicating with the same device, they will all be synchronized together. So I said that uh, I could demonstrate how we can assign a button to a particular thing. Let's say that we want to have one of the camera selected buttons uh, in the bottom uh, turn on and on, uh, on and off, autofocus. So um, what you will do if you want to make this change to your uh, PTC Pro controller is to access the configuration interface. And this is why we have the USB cable uh, on the table. So now the, the controller is connected over to my computer where I can bring it into configuration mode and access a web interface. So you need the Skyhoy firmware application for this kind of thing. Then you press the local configuration button and you will see an interface load when the, the controller has... Uh, we ask the controller what IP address do you have? And then as it has rebooted in configuration mode, this web interface will appear that you see right now on screen. And um, in this web interface, we can now uh, take um, the button here in the lower right corner, for which is camera selector 8. It doesn't make so much sense in a Visca scenario because for a, um, a camera like this, we only have seven cameras that we can chain together on the uh, Visca bus. So I press this button and you'll see how um, it currently is assigned to, to uh, change shift level on the controller. Uh, it's in this case redundant, so I'll just remove the feature. And then I will go here and you see this long list of actions. Interesting, you can, you can sit down and study these online if you want to do that. But let's now just select focus setting. And then we recognize that for camera number one, this will apparently allow us to change between uh, auto and manual mode. Uh, we also have some modifiers we can select like a toggle, hold down, on, off and so forth. Um, we'll just, uh, yeah, select toggle, that makes sense. We press it repeatedly and it will turn it on and off. What we need to do is to use memory A for camera selecting, uh, selection because um, as I explained to you previously, we can access multiple cameras, which is a great feature, but it also means that we cannot assign, uh, when we assign a, a command to be sent to the camera, it has to be the camera stored in memory AA, which is uh, the memory cell inside the controller that holds that value. So we have done that right now. We can save and reboot the controller and we'll see it's, it's uh, reconnecting over to the camera and will now give us access to turning focus on and off on the button we have assigned this function to. So the controller is rebooted now and you see displays are blanked out because we haven't selected camera one, but I'm now going to select camera one. We see that it was dimmed uh, lit, uh, which means that it has uh, recognized that the camera exists on the bus. And now you see on this button out here that we actually have focus mode auto and then there's a small symbol that will tell us that as we press this button we can toggle on and off uh, manual and auto mode in the camera. Actually let's just go to uh, the menu where we had it because we have focus mode right here so you can see as I press this button it will also show that it changes its mode up here because these two functions are in fact now redundant. I have taken a feature that was in the menu but now also assigned it to a button down here so of course they should reflect the same value. 
All right. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you are um, inspired by it. I hope you uh, will send us feedback if you think there's something we should um, do. I think there may even come up other videos, in particular about preset selection, where we have some interesting ideas about how to use the display buttons to uh, communicate uh, a label for preset. I think that will be very powerful. So watch out for videos um, that will uh, present that feature, uh, which will make these controllers even more unique and awesome for your IDA PTC cameras.